measure our faith by the way we sing. We worship God and after church on Sunday, after two hours or two and a half hours staying in the church, when we go back out there, we become just like who we are before. We should never stop preaching the gospel. We should never stop preaching the word of God to a lot of people. It's not automatic. You have to recognize it. You have to repent for it. You have to ask for the blood of Jesus to cleanse it. You have to believe in the atonement of Jesus Christ. And it has to be brought to the cross for it to die. Message of the Word of God becomes part of our life and when we speak the word of God, people listen to us because we speak the truth. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Good morning everybody. It's uh Sunday, Sunday morning, and um, it's Father's Day, and I would like to greet everybody who's watching right now. Happy Father's Day! I hope you're uh, enjoying and you've been spoiled by your kids. I saw somebody last night. We went out with me and my wife, and uh, we have our dinner outside last night. And I saw a lot of uh, families are celebrating their father. Father's Day celebration in uh, some restaurants and I'm happy to see all those fathers enjoying with their big smile with their family and kids and I am so excited too today because it's my day it's Father's Day day <laughs> all right before we go I would like to uh, greet all the uh, People who's watching right now, I know I saw some from the Philippines and uh, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Good morning at mabuhay po kayo and keep watching because we're going to be talking about Father's Day today because it's our day, Father's Day, and we'll talk about being a father. And I uh, also would like to greet all those watching uh, from New Zealand and all those watching from Australia, from Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. Thank you for watching. and. Um, Join me for the next uh, few minutes as we discuss and talk about Father. All right, so let me start by <clears throat> telling you about me growing up with my dad. You see, my dad, um, he is one of, I guess, not only one of the best father, but he is the best father to me, and I... Uh, miss him so much. I grew up uh, admiring him so much. I don't like to use the word idol, idolizing him. I admire him and honor him growing up. And uh, I, I remember when I was um, still a little boy and uh, the first movie that my father took me into and watched a movie, I was so excited uh, sitting with him in the Philippines, we use a tricycle. We call it tricycle. I don't know what you call it here. Tricycle is a motorcycle with a uh, sidecar. I even don't know if you understand what sidecar is. It's something that attached to the motorcycle in the Philippines. So uh, me and my father, he was I was sitting uh, beside him going to the first movie. I was still, I guess, um, I was around five, six years old and uh, so we went to the movie and we watched this uh, action movie and I was, I'm not actually excited uh, watching a movie, I'm excited I am being with my father and I always imitate uh, what he does. So he was sitting like his one foot forward, so I was, I was sitting uh, also uh, in the tricycle with one foot forward, uh, just trying to imitate my dad because I, I admire him so much and I have a very close relationship with my father and um, so growing up with him I um, still vividly uh, remember the time where we go to the beach because Philippines we have 7,100 islands and most of our 
uh, regions and provinces in the Philippines have beaches. We have the nice beaches in the world. So uh, we live down south, and I grew up in Holo. And um, one of the best beaches in the Philippines is in my place. So we usually go every, almost every Sunday uh, to the beach with my dad. And um, my dad, he used to make, um, which is my favorite, kinilaw. I don't know. Some of you don't know what kinilaw means. It's a uh, raw fish cooked by uh, vinegar. So you, you, you slice like this much of the fish and you cook it with vinegar and a lot of like chili and uh, those kind of things. So um, I love, I love, I love uh, uh, kinilaw with uh, fresh fish and uh, I, I actually miss that. And my dad make that every time we go to the beach with his friends and I usually run around and swim. I grew up in water and uh, I learned how to swim so early because of my dad. And uh, so I grew up with him and, and, and my dad is also a singer. He sings, not me. I was, <laughs> he sings so well that he sounds, he actually sounds like Nat King Cole during the time. So he is a very, very good singer. I keep telling my wife that my dad is a singer and my, my wife said, okay, I want to hear. Well, when we got married, uh, she was able to meet my dad and my dad at that time uh, uh, is, is growing, I would not like to say growing old, but he's maturing. And his voice is, starts to crack, and but he still sings very good. And my wife still admire my dad's voice. And I was asking God, and I said, Lord, why, why didn't you, why didn't you, give me that same voice? And <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, I hope I have his voice. I can sing like him. But that's my dad. That's my dad. I love my dad so much. So we were talking about Father's Day today. And I know a lot of dads out there are also have the same stories like my dad. And nowadays, I'm already a dad. I have three daughters. Uh, uh, they're grown-up daughters. My eldest daughter, she's, she lives in Sydney. My two daughters, my second and my third daughter, they live in New Zealand. So... Uh, it's it's not easy to be a dad, but it's 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 wonderful and it's it's so privileged, fulfilling as a dad to be a dad. And uh, I always keep saying that uh, it's easy to become a dad, but it's not easy to be a dad. All right, so here we go. Uh, I prepared this uh, uh, video, and I hope you uh, enjoy watching this uh, video here. Uh... Hey Reva, there's a very special day coming. Yeah, Leah, that's what I have too. It's called Father's Day. I'm really glad that I have Dad. Yeah, he's irreplaceable. You can say that again. Yeah, he's irreplaceable. <laughs> <laughs> Our story is not a secret. We were just little tiny babies. We didn't have water. We were fatherless. I don't really remember it very much. Me either. We were pretty young. But we were adopted into a loving family. And when you choose him, God adopts you into his family. 
and he becomes not a pretend dad or a partial dad or anything less than your really dad and you become his really child. Of a good father is something to treasure forever. Second, God is a good father. Being his child makes Father's Day extra special. Happy Father's Day, everyone! <laughs> Ah, uh, that was a good, good video about Father's Day, and uh, I know we all have a lot of different stories being a father, and uh, it's quite challenging uh, when you become a father, uh, watching your kids growing up like that, and they start to talk, and when they talk, you cannot stop them talking, and they keep talking and talking, and then until they grow up, and... Uh, being a father, we experience different uh, episode of, of episodes of their lives as they grow up. And uh, now my uh, kids are grown up and you uh, treat them not just a daughter, but they are your friends, good friends. And I keep calling my kids, although they are far away from us, but we keep uh in touch through a video or 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 call and uh i always um uh talk to them on the phone me and my wife we talk to them on the phone because we miss them so much just a father you always miss your kids and i was um actually uh watching uh this movie uh, called uh everybody's fine and uh watching that movie it makes me cry all the time all the time it's a st i don't know all of your fathers if you if you want to watch the movie everybody's fine it's a story of a father who missed their kids so much and they have uh, uh the father has four kids and all those four kids uh, were away from the father and he wants to and he wants to you know uh, see them because he he missed them so much and uh even though they are they have their own family they, they are grown up kids but to the father's eyes they will always be a little kid to him and it's it's in it's a very nice movie it's a uh, father and and kids story it's a very nice good good story you choose the english one not the Chi there's a chinese one but i love the english one uh starred by robert de niro Robert De Niro is the uh, main actor of that movie, and uh, I love the English version. And they have a new one now that uh, is a Chinese version. I, it's also nice, but I love the, the, the English version, uh, 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 well, than the uh, Chinese version. So, let's move on to this in First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 to 12. Alright, so I want you to be with me, and let's all read this verse. So we could be in one page. All right. So let's start with verse 10. It says, You yourselves are our witnesses, and so is God, that we were devout and honest and faultless toward all of you believers. So this is Paul talking, and he says, uh, We were devout and honest and faultless, or meaning to say blameless, toward all of you believers. In verse 11, and he says, And you know that we treated each of you, each of you, as a father treats his own children. So Paul considered himself as a father, treating the brethren as his own children. We all know that Paul never really got married, but being a father in faith, he treated everyone, each of them, as a father treats his own children. In verse 12, and he says, We pleaded with you, encourage you, and I urge you to live your lives in a way that God would consider worthy. For he called you to share in his kingdom and glory. You see, being a Christian in the kingdom of God, it all boils down to who we are in the Lord. The desire of God is to see us change, transform, and conform to be just like Him. The way, we, the, the way God looks into your heart 
uh, he, he wants us to, to, to change and transform and become like father to our children. And that's, that's just exactly what Paul was talking about. And he says, and you know that we treated each of you as a father treats his own children. A father treats his own children. You, you know that we as pastors, we are like the father of the church. It's like Paul, he treated the, the brethren like, like his own. And we as pastors, we treat the members of our church as our own kids. Does it matter how old they are? Maybe they are. They might be older than we are. But we are the father in faith. We take care of them just like our own as a father. So Paul says, And you know that we treated each of you as a father treats his own children. And in verse 12 he says, We pleaded with you, encourage you, and urge you to live your lives in a way that God would consider worthy i like that word that he says to live your life to live your lives in a way that god would consider worthy so what is worthiness to god what is worthiness to god it's in here the heart how we treated it's one of us it's one of you in the church or being a father to the kids we as christians you see sometimes we when we're in the church, we are like we look like holy and saints. But when we're back home, we look like devil. <laughs> I'm sorry to use that word. We we look so different, and sometimes our kids are confused who we really are, because sometimes when we when when our kids comes with us as father comes to the church and they look at us, we greet everybody. Hey, how are you? How's everything? When we go to church, we don't even talk to our kids. So as a father, I hope we learn something today. All right? So let's move on. The traits of a good father. What is the traits of a good father? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11, it says, You yourselves are our witnesses, and so is God that we were devout and honest and faultless toward all of you believers. And you know that we treated each of you as a father treats his own son. So what is a trait of a good father? We all want to be a good father. And uh, so number one is righteousness. Righteous. It says moral, morally correct. But one of the traits of a father is righteous, being right before God and right before our kids. And uh, so those of you who are Christians go to church and those who are not Christians, maybe you don't go to church, but you're watching right now. Uh, you know, we, we need to learn the righteousness of God. What is righteous? Being right before the Lord. Being right before God. And our kids are watching us. I, was, I, mean, I, I, I watched my dad, my father growing up. And I look at him and he is not a saint. And I mean, my father, even at the time, is not, he is not even a Christian. He don't go to church and... Uh, he believes in a general God. He, he, he always tells me that all, all religions are the same. You know, I mean, he, there's only one God. He believes in all those a general belief of some or most of the people in the world. And, uh, and, but then my father always tells me not to cheat, be a good person. He always tells me about good things. And he wants me to grow, to grow up uh, uh, Morally upright, being righteous. Even him without knowing who God is and what the Bible is, he, he, don't, he don't even read the Bible. And I was so thankful that before he died, when I mean, my father is only gone with the Lord now, but before he died, he accepted the Lord Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior. So I'm so glad about it that I know one day I'll see him in heaven. But even though during those days when he was still young, and he, and he always tells me about being right, before the people. So being a father, one of the traits of a good father is righteousness, being right. Don't show our kids. You see, a lot of fathers, we always wanted to, to see our kids growing up to be a good person. But if you want to see your kids to be a good person, to, to be a good people, you must show them what a good father is. They need an example. 
They need somebody that they, that they look up as a good father. And one of the things we can show our kids is to live a righteous life. To live a righteous life. All right? So that's number one. Number two is being blameless, meaning faultless. Paul used the word faultless or blameless, meaning to say it's a, to set a good example. To set a good example. And most of the fathers, you know, I mean, we always wanted our kids to go to church every Sunday. But some fathers, they don't go to church every Sunday. How can we be a good example to our kids? We don't even go to church, but we want our kids to go to church. We want our kids to pray. We want our, our, our kids to read the Bible. But the father it's himself don't do the same thing. The father don't go to church regularly, don't even pray, don't even read the Bible. How can we set an example to our kids? How can we be blameless? Where the kids always say that, why do you want me to do this, to do that, if you don't do it yourself? So as a father, we need to be blameless. We need to set us a good example. If we want our kids to go to church regularly, we as father, we need to go to church regularly. If we want to see our kids to pray all the time, we need to pray all the time. Right? That's why if, if we want to see our kids, our children to be a good kid or good children, we need to be a good father. So uh, just like what I said, what I said, it's easy to become a father, but it is hard to be a father. Fathering, it's challenging, it's not easy. All right? So B is blameless and let us see, holy. Keep walking with God. I know it's 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 quite challenging to live as a Christian because we're not always up here. Sometimes living as a Christian, sometimes our Christian Christian walk, Christian life goes down here, and when we're down, it's hard to pretend. To be up here when we're here. I know. I understand that. Because I also go through that. But as a father. We need to keep ourselves. Before God. In our walk with the Lord every day. When we're here. We need to try to go back to here. We don't stay down there. We need to stand up. We need to stop. To, you know, to start. Growing. And going up. Back to where we are. Holiness, to walk in holiness, we need to walk with God every day. And uh, me and my wife, we always talk and discuss things pertaining to God. And uh, we, because me and my wife, we, we, we are also human. Not all the time we are up here. There are times that we are down here. So when we are down here, we always wanted to go up there. And it's hard. The journey between here and there is not easy. You know, I mean, when, when you feel so uh, cold in your Christian walk, Christian faith, you don't feel anything. God is not talking to you. I mean, it seems like heaven is quite far away from you. You feel you feel so dry, and and and, and you 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 don't you don't feel the presence of God anymore, and you. you 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 you're like walking blindly and that's where a time where you say god lord i need you so much that's where i ask for the mercy of god and pray and kneel before the lord because if god don't show up i'm in trouble i'm in trouble i always wanted god to speak to me i always wanted god to 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 show himself to me and my wife yesterday she was talking to me about you know in australia it's it's um very common, most especially here in Townsville, that uh, a cockatoo, it's, it's a parrot, it's a, it's a kind of a parrot, a cockatoo, they call it cockatoo, the white cockatoo. I love the black cockatoo, but the white cockatoo, and my wife always say how she wished that there will be a lot of cockatoo that will come to our balcony, and she would love to feed the cockatoo. And, uh, but you see, cockatoo are a very loud bird. <laughs> they are so loud 
And uh, so, uh, but there was no cockatoo in our, in, in our place coming here, only small birds that comes into our balcony that we feed them almost every morning. And then yesterday, for the first time, there was one cockatoo, one cockatoo that landed in our uh, front yard. And this one cockatoo, and my wife was so excited, she ran to my room, to our room, and, and told me that, oh, Dad, can you imagine? I prayed for cockatoo, and I saw a cockatoo in the, the, the front yard. And uh, she took a picture of it. And then uh, I took her to work, so she went back to work. And then uh, in the middle of the day, she texted me back, uh, and she said, can, uh, guess what? And she said, oh, well, we have a friend called Ann Hamilton. And Hamilton wrote an, wrote an article on Facebook that very day, that yesterday, that very morning, she talks about coca too. And uh, we were surprised because we took it and say, well, that's God talking. And Anne Hamilton talked about coca too being a watchman and how sensitive a coca too is and was. Cockatoo, when he comes uh, uh, to your place, um, the cockatoo watch uh, the, the the area, and, and when he when one cockatoo see that the area is safe and a good place, and the cockatoo goes back to his friends, and some cockatoos come back with 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 him or her cockatoo with with the cockatoo, and bring more people. Oh, sorry, not people, <laughs> more birds, more birds to that same place. And uh, there's one cocote, they call, they call, uh, Anne called them as the watchman. And God was speaking to us, and, and most basically to my wife, being a watchman, because when you're a watchman, you, you, you watch the presence of God and you pray. A watchman's prayer. Anyway, and, and things like that, you know, very simple things. I mean, birds like that, God speaks to you through birds. Or sometimes people sometimes see God speaks to them through the clouds or through nature. Or, you know, we, if we are so sensitive to God, God speaks to us. That's how we walk. How, that's how we walk with God. We keep on seeking God. We keep on following God. And He speaks to us in different ways. And as a Christian, we walk in holiness with God. We need to be sensitive to God. And when our kids see that uh, from us, they start to follow us. They start to, to do the same. They start to be sensitive to God. They start to, to seek God just like the father or the mom. So we need to show an example to our kids. We need to walk in holiness. All right? So three things. Being righteous before God, being righteous before our kids, we need to show them as an example of righteousness, to live in righteousness, no lies in the family, no lies. In <laughs> my kids, whenever we have stories, we always have to tell them because they don't want to be left behind. And everything we do, my kids will always say, why did you not tell us about this? And I said, that's why everything we do, me and my wife, we always call them and say, okay, this is what happened to us. And we need to let them know what's going on. What, even when we have a new job or we bought something, we bought, you know, whatever we buy or some, anything, we need to let them know. Because they need to know and they want to know. And I said, okay, I bought this uh, and I bought that and we have this and we have that. We, we, we ate at the restaurant. We went to the mountain. I have to let them know. Because if they don't, I mean, they, if they don't know and they found it out, well, I mean, they will always tell us, why did you not let us know? Okay. So, uh, so I always, we want to be, you know, transparent to them. And uh, so that's, that's how our relationship with my kids uh, goes. And, also, and, and so they are. They also tell us about their, their, their day at work or what happened to them. They, keep, uh, they, they, they call us and let us know. That's how open we are. No lies. All right? No secrets. And um, so that's, that's how we live. So we, we live in righteousness. We live uh, as, as a father. A, be a blameless to our kids. We need to be a good example. And thirdly is being holy, meaning to say we need to keep walking with God so they would walk. Our kids also 
walk with God the same as we do. Number two, what a good father does. So what a good father does. All right. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12, it says, We pleaded with you, encourage you, and urge you to live your lives in a way that God would consider worthy, for he called you to share in his kingdom and glory. Number one, letter A is encourages. We as father, we need to keep encouraging our kids. Don't forget that. All right? As a father. We need to encourage our kids. And whatever situations they are in, we need to talk to them and encourage them. Don't put them down. And uh, this is very common in the Philippines. When our kids doesn't make good in, at school, we call them B-O-B-O. Now, B-O-B-O is not body odor, body odor. It's, uh, it means different thing. Uh, we call them, uh, in English, it's, it's the word stupid. So when our kids go home and they have these red marks in their card, meaning to say they have some failures in their subjects, we call them bobo or stupid. You know, you better make it good next time. But we as father, we always encourage them. Not, not encourage them to, to fail at school, but encourage them to, you know, be better next time. You know, I mean, I know, I understand. Maybe, maybe you need me. Let's, let's, let's study more. Let's study more. We need to encourage as a father. Because we always, we, we are not perfect. And there will come a time that we, some, we sometimes fail in life. I mean, being a father, we are not also, you know, a perfect father. As a father, we also sometimes fail. We fail in different ways. As a parent, we fail sometimes. But we need people that will encourage us, brings us up. The same thing with the kids. Our kids, sometimes they, they, they get hurt. They're being bullied at school or they, they feel so uh, uh, down on, on, on some, some certain days. But we need to let, you know, be, we need to be sensitive to them. We need to bring them up. We need to encourage them and talk to them. Let's have that communication with our kids. Let's talk. As a father, one of the good things we need to do as a father is to encourage our kids. Encourage them. Right? And... Uh, that's how important it is. Number two, comforts. As a father, we need to comfort them. And uh, I know, and, I, and we always hope that every day is a good day to us. But there are some days that days that comes that are not good. And there are days that we feel so down and we feel like, the world is against us. And we need some comforting words. That's why, Father, we need to, you know, uh, continue walking with God. We need to read the Word of God so that we could use this Word in our relationship with the Lord to our kids. And talk to them. And encourage them. Comfort them. And our kids, most of the times, they need a father image. So talk to them. Communicate with them. And give them some comforting words. So sometimes when a father, you see your kids crying. And uh, <laughs> I, I remember just recently, my daughter, my youngest daughter, she, uh, uh, Janika, uh, she rang us and uh, let us know that her car was hit by another car. <laughs> and she said, I don't know. She said, uh, 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 she called us and she said, the guy who hit her car ran away. <laughs> and she said, how will I fix my car? Uh, so we need to comfort her and talk to her. And he said, is there any witness? So uh, the good thing is that um, uh, the neighbors, because her car was parked on the side of the road and there's another car that hit her car and all the neighbors saw who hit the car even though the, the guy who hit her car ran away uh, during the accident but the neighbors saw what kind of car was that <laughs> it was a car uh, what what car is that it's a uh, a cleaner's car with uh, the logo and the name of the <laughs> 
it just I just it makes me laugh. Uh, it's so funny because I don't know what's what came to the driver's mind that he ran away with with, with the uh, in the in the middle of this accident with a car that is a big name of the company and a big logo, and he thought he can run away with it, but no. The neighbors saw everything, and uh, and my daughter called the company and said that your car hit my car. <laughs> and uh, But then they admitted their fault, and everything was fixed, and everything went well. <laughs> But you know, sometimes you 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 experience those kind those kind of things, and um, and your daughter, you know, I mean, your your children, your kids call you up, and you know, you need to just comfort them at times, and 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 talk to them, and give them some some advice. And so we talk to my I I me and my wife we talk to my daughter, and said you know call the company. Uh, uh, call the police, get the police report, and all those kind of things. So, and when your kid feels that your the dad or your mom is with them and behind them, helping them, they get encouraged, right? They get encouraged. So, uh, so encourage your kids, comfort your kids, uh, and letter C is urge to a godly life. Encourage your kids to live a godly life. So we'll go back to the first one that we that we talk about to live a holy life. It is connected to encourage our kids or urge our kids to live a godly life. So we as a father, we need to show them an example. So if, one, if we want our kids to to uh, follow God and, and be faithful to God, we as parents, most especially the father, to be a good example. And we need to talk to them and encourage them, pray with them. Um, in our church, uh, the Church of Faith, we have this, what we call the Lighthouses of Prayers. We have our Wednesday prayer meeting, but uh, aside from the prayer meetings we do have on Wednesday, we also encourage the church to have a Lighthouses of Prayers. Lighthouse, lighthouses of Prayers is a prayer that the family prays at home. And uh, it is, this is very important because we want our family to pray together. Not only the family prays together, but the family covers another family. So if your family prays here in this place, in this house, like for example, my family, we pray together with our kids. In this house, we pray for another family to cover them, to bless them. To, to you know uh, 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 stand on behalf of this family so we pray and we change that every week so we we move around but the the, the, the objective is we we encourage our kids to pray with their parents that's one way of urging them encouraging them to live a godly life we need to talk to them and do something you know we go to church together we wake up early on Sunday. We bring them to church together. Some parents, they don't think going to church every Sunday is beneficial. But it is good and beneficial to every family. We need to make it a habit to bring our kids to church. Because if our kids knows and, 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 and growing up learn that going to Sunday is not that important, you cannot blame your kids not going to church their lives, their whole life, right? So if you want our kids to be closer to God, to believe in God and to walk with God, we need to show them example. So we need to pray with them uh, at home or prayer meetings or bring them to church every Sunday. Even if you don't like to go to church, you must go to church every Sunday for the sake of your kids or just for the sake of, your, of, of yourselves too. Getting closer to God, right? Being lazy is not an excuse not to go to church. And a lot of people, they always say, well, I can always watch preaching on Sunday, uh, a lot of uh, preaching on TV. I can open my TV, TV sets, and sit down on my couch and just listen to the message every Sunday. You see, let me tell you again, and I keep saying this again and again, Christianity is not about you. Just to let you know, Christianity is not about us. 
Christianity is all about God. We are in God's business and God wants you to go to church. All right? So just to let you know, and those people who wa who's watching right now, just to let you know that uh, God wants to see you in church every Sunday. So, my PowerPoint is gone. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, my wife maybe can tell you the password there. Uh, my, my, my laptop runs out of battery, so we're still fixing it. So, yeah, uh, a lot of us Christians, we always make excuses, and we thought that our excuses are good in the sight of God. No, no. And uh, we're always so much self-centered and self-righteous that we are always focused on ourselves. And uh, we always, you know, um, tell God, you know, uh, God, because you love me so much, and, um, you know, um, look at me, I need you, Lord. And what happened is that, <laughs> hold on, what happened, uh, Mayet? Starting now? Okay, all good. <laughs> all right. So we're having trouble with my PowerPoint again. So anyway, we're almost done. So yeah, just like to encourage all the fathers and just to have this uh, renewed mindset that we do have. Being a Christian is not all about us. It's all about God. And building the church, God said, upon this rock, I shall build my church. And uh, just recently, I was listening to this article, and because we have this word church as uh, ecclesia, ecclesia in uh, in Greek, and um, we don't really understand because when it was translated to Greek from Hebrew, and uh, I just found out that the New Testament was written in Hebrew, not in Greek. And uh, when they translated the Hebrew translation, uh, original text of the New Testament to Greek, some of the words are uh, uh, not complete. Now, some of the verses are uh, incomplete. And there are some omitted words. And one of those is the word church. So when they translated the word ecclesia, the church, ecclesia to Greek, all we know that uh, the the meaning of the word ecclesia or church is called out once. That's it, period. But actually, the original word of the word ecclesia or the church in Hebrew is different from the translation to Greek. The word the word ecclesia or the word church in the Hebrew word meaning to say it is a called out once that stands before God that preaches God's word. So meaning to say, what it means is in, in Hebrew, we as a church, we are called out once to be the mouthpiece of God, to speak forth on behalf of the Lord. So we are called as a church. So when God says, upon this rock, I shall build my church. When God builds his church, he's building his church with the people who will speak on behalf of God. That's why I would like to say it again. Christianity is not all about you or me. It's all about God. So when we surrender our life to God, we give everything to him. He's now our boss. So we cannot make an, make an excuses that I don't feel going to church, I feel lazy, I stay in my couch watching TV and watching preaching on TV that may, be, that may encourage me, that brings me up. I say it again. It's not about you. It's about God. Stand up on Sunday and go to church so we could be useful. We could function, right? So that's how it is. That's how Christianity works. All right, I'd just like to encourage you. Being a father, I would like to encourage you and comfort you. All right, okay. 
Because when things goes wrong, everything switch because we're all electronics. So when things goes wrong there, it uh the connection to here is just uh anyway. Where am I? Let's go to uh the comfort uh urge okay. So there you go. Urge to a godly life. That's where we stop there. So the next one is what the heavenly father does. So we have a, a earthly father like me and some of you who are watching right now celebrating Father's Day. We also have the father of all which is our heavenly father. So what the heavenly father does calls us into his kingdom and glory. He calls us. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't know if I'll say this or not. <laughs> it's hard, really. It's hard. It's hard pastoring, most especially when you know uh, uh, the truth and and things that's going on in our lives. We just, you know, growing up in the Lord, and I've been pastoring for, I've been pastoring for more than thirty-five years now. Me and my wife, and um, we learn many things every day. We learn many things every day, and uh, as a Christian, we just learn that our previous learning growing up as a pastor is way 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 far from the truth that we learn today and uh <laughs> we're trying to correct the mistakes that our maybe forefathers did in the past because a lot of churches today that are we call it traditional church and we keep teaching things that centered to our church centered on people centered on titles and center of things on earth no we need to understand that when we get into the kingdom of god it's all about god we are here to serve the lord that's why we are called servant of God. So we serve God. We don't serve ourselves. We don't use God for our own benefits. Right? And I hope you understand that. And don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. God loves us so much. Okay? God bless us. God covers us. God protects us. But it is not about ourselves. The reason why God used, I mean, do that to us because he preserves our lives so we could serve him more. We could serve him more and uh there's a lot of things that i would like to share but uh this is not the right time for me to share all those things because we're talking about fathers today but being a father uh the heavenly father does is to call us into his kingdom and glory he called us into his kingdom and his glory for us to serve him in his kingdom we need to preach and speak the word on his behalf. We are God's ambassador. We talk about him. We don't talk about us. We don't talk about our, our accomplishment. We don't talk about how big our church is. We don't talk how many people come to our church. No, we talk about the goodness of God. We talk about the love of God. We talk about God. Not our performance. That's why God says we need to humble ourselves before the Lord because all of this boils down to God and his kingdom. That's why he says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It's all about the kingdom of God. And God calls us into his kingdom and his glory. And we want to see all these things being accomplished in the days to come. And... Uh, I just keep saying, and I said, a lot of Christians, a lot of people talk talks about their journey with God. I, you know, I am in journey. I'm walking with God. But the question is, when we are in journey with the Lord, my first question is, where are you now? Where are we now? Where are we in our Christian walk? We are just like israelites or the hebrew people who walks in the wilderness for 40 years they just go around and go around and go around for 40 years until they all died in the wilderness a lot of christians we all 
walking the same thing. We preach the same message again and again. We just change the title and everything. We just walk and walk and walk. See, we have as a father in the church, being a pastor, we need to bring the church into where God wants your church to go. We need to be sensitive to God and listen to the Lord. That's why it's not easy. All right, so going back, what the Heavenly Father does, He calls us into the kingdom, His kingdom and glory. Conclusion is, children of God, imitate God. We as Father, we imitate our God as Father. And we need to listen to God and be conformed to His image. This uh, uh, saying by Frank Clark, he says, A father is a man who expects his son to be as good a man as he meant to be. Let me say it again. A father is a man who expects his son to be as good a man as he meant to be. We expect our sons, or maybe our kids, daughters, to be as good as they meant to be. But being a father, we need to show them, you know, be an example to them, speak to them, encourage them, comfort them, be a good example to them if we want to see them to be a good son or a good daughter. I like the next one. It says here, every gir girl may not be queen to her husband, but she is always a princess to her father. <laughs> right? Every girl may not be queen to her husband, but she is always a princess to her father. That's true. That is very, very true. All my daughters, they are all princess to me. I have princess one, princess two, princess three. I have three daughters. They are all princess because my wife always wants to be a queen. <laughs> so, thank you so much for listening. And uh, we have our... Uh, First, uh, first Sunday today, and we have our communion. And um, so those of you who have your uh, communion ready, we already have uh, asked you to prepare your communion elements at home. So you join me in this communion time where we uh, partake communion together. So you can still have time to prepare your communion. And my wife, you see, um, Mayet came here today. She brought us a, an, she made an unleavened bread. So we're going to use it right now. We have this cup and unleavened bread. I'll show you the unleavened bread. Uh, okay, uh, let me put this one here. This is how big the unleavened bread, and I don't know how, how to eat this big. <laughs> but let me, let me try. And uh, uh, she made this for uh, our communion today. All right, so we're going to pray. I'm going to pray for this, and I'll uh, share it with uh, some of uh, our brethren who are sitting here with us. So here we go. All right, so anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll pray. Uh, for this first, and I'll uh, just change my glasses to my reading glasses. All right, okay. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-three. It says, "For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat." This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And I always uh, explaining this and saying this, that how significant, uh, this communion is and was, right? Because we have this uh, symbolizes of the blood of Jesus and the body of Christ. And uh, the blood of Jesus uh, reminds us 
of our covenant, blood covenant with Him. When He died on the cross, He washed our sins with His blood, and, and, and we made covenant with Him right now, and we say, Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior, and uh, we surrender our life to Him. And every time we partake Holy Communion, God reminds us, we are being reminded, that's why the Bible says, do this in remembrance of me. And God was telling us all the time, always, remember the covenant you made when you accepted me as your Lord and Savior. That's what Jesus was going to say. So every time we partake this Holy Communion, it reminds us of our covenant, agreement with God, our commitment, our relationship, as we surrender our life to God, it never changed. And God keeps reminding us, every time we partake Holy Communion, Remember the day when you made a covenant with God because God is a covenant keeper. How about you? That's the question. All right, so I will share this with uh, you already have. So I'll just make uh, some uh, bite size. Okay, this one here. That fits in my mouth, all right? Okay, so let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us a chance that reminds us, O Lord God, of your death on the cross and your blood being poured to wash our sins, Lord. And thank you, Lord God. And I pray, Father, as we remember you, Lord God, we also are reminded of our covenant with you. As when we commit our lives, when we surrender our lives to you, Lord God, I pray, Father, that you continue, Lord God, to work. In our lives, Lord God, and change us, Lord God, and conform us, oh Lord God, to be like your son, Jesus Christ. So thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for this communion, Lord God. And again, give you all the glory and praise and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, oh God, we pray. Amen. Mm. Thank you so much, Mayat. Ngayon ko lang nalaman. Na ang unleavened bread pala, walang lasa. <laughs> Joke lang. Alright, okay. So, Father's Day, because it's Father's Day today, so we're gonna pray for the fathers. And, um, because last time we celebrate Mother's Day, some mothers complained that they were not being prayed for. And during that time, the Mother's Day, that was, when was that, the Mother's Day? That was in... Is it in May? And during the time when we have our uh, Mother's Day celebration, um, we're still on lockdown and we're still online, doing online. So I just greeted all the mothers. Happy Mother's Day online. And some of the mothers says, you did not pray for us. <laughs> so I don't want all the fathers today will tell me you did not pray for us. So we're going we're to pray for all the fathers. And because I'm a father, and uh, because I'm a father, uh, I don't want to pray for myself. So I would like to call my wife to pray for us. Um, so, my beautiful wife, can you please come? And I would like to uh, just uh, hold on. Brother. All right, okay, we got it there. Right. And uh, just we'll watch the video. Tell me something. Falls on your face. How do you quickly replace it with a golden silver smile? Tell me something when you feel tired and afraid. How do you know just what to say? Everything alright. I don't think that you even realize the joy you make me feel when I'm inside your universe. You hold me like I'm the one who's precious. I hate to break it to you, but it's just the other way around. You can think you're still. Hi there, 
Dad, surprise! I don't think we've shown you enough how much we love you, so this year we thought we'd give it a red hot car. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for us. I don't think we could ask for a better dad. And I thank God every day for giving us you. We love you so much. Hi Dad, happy Father's Day. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for us, for always supporting us and for all the sacrifices that you have made. We can't thank you enough for being the amazing man that you are. We aspire to be just like you and we love you so much. Dad, happy Father's Day. Um, thank you for being the best dad anyone could have ever asked for. Thank you for being the shoulder that I cry on when I'm sad, being a comedian and making me laugh when I'm mad, and being my unpaid therapist when I'm scared and unsure. Um, even though we're in different countries right now, wherever you guys are is always where I want to be. I'm wishing you all the happiness in the world today and forever. And I miss you and I love you and I can't wait to see you again. Dad, you are our first love. You are our hero. Our best friend. Our mentor. Our rock. And our inspiration. Happy, Happy Father's, Father's Day! Day. <laughs> I, oh, okay. I, I agree with everything they have said about my beloved husband he's not only an amazing husband but he's and an amazing pastor but a really great father amazing father to our kids and he's grown a lot as a father he's grown a lot and uh, I think this is the best he's ever been as a father and <laughs> Everything that he's sharing with you today is true, 100% true. And uh, there's so much more before us in the next years ahead. All right, so we encourage all the fathers, those who have very small kids right now, it's something to look forward to when your kids are all grown up and they become your best friends and they become like our daughters and you will rip what you have sown in their lives okay so let's now pray for the fathers right father we thank you our heavenly father we thank you amen lord for all the fathers that are here right now listening to us those who are watching and even those who are not watching and every father in townsville and even lord god in the world we know that we can pray for them in general right now because your plan and your purpose for each father is the same, that they will become just like you. And I thank you for this father right beside me, who I've seen being transformed day after day, just wanting to be just like you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, that I am a witness to that. And you have given me the honor of seeing in his life. And it is our desire, oh God, our Heavenly Father, that we will see this happen in the lives of the fathers in Church of Faith Townsville and in every church here on earth and even worldwide, oh God. Because that's what you prophesied, Lord, through Malachi that, Lord, you will turn the hearts of the father to their children and the hearts of their children to their father so that, Lord, you will not send the curse to this land. As of now, we are seeing so many curses happening in the world because this has not yet happened. But, Father, we are asking you and pleading for the blood of our Yeshua HaMashiach that one by one, heart by heart, one life at a time, one father at a time, that you would transform the heart of each father, that you would turn the hearts of these fathers to their children and the hearts of their children to you, and that they will start showing their children who a father should be. 
and show the children, their children, your heart for them. We can never really 100% do it, oh God. But little by little, step by step, one day at a time, one hour at a time, one minute, one second at a time, one moment at a time, oh God, as the children are growing up, Lord, that this will happen in their lives. And your glory will just fill the earth, oh God, because of this. We thank you for being the Father that you are and showing us what it is to be a father. And these fathers, oh God, would start walking in that, in that truth. Thank you, oh God. Thank you for your love, for your everlasting love, giving us your only begotten son. And that's what a father does, sacrifice the best and the precious in his life. Amen. Thank you, Father. We bless all the fathers today. And even those who have grown up kids, it's not too late. It's not too late. They can, they can still start showing that love to their kids, oh God. Start with forgiveness, asking forgiveness. Is start with humbling themselves before their kids. And then your love will flow through them. Thank you, Father. We love you. We honor you as our Father, our everlasting God and Father. And we honor these fathers today. I honor this Father here today, O oh God. And we bless you for everything that you are to us. In Yeshua HaMashiach's name. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, I would like to say thank you to all my kids. And thank you who made the video uh, is it you mayat you did, did you? uh joan did the video so uh so thank you so much joan joan is in sydney she uh, did all the video and what can i say i'm so surprised that is <laughs> that is a very, very uh, surprising uh, video so uh all right so let's go to our numbers chapter six and those of you who are at home uh numbers chapter six uh we'll we will all recite this um uh verse and all the fathers uh, you can gather your kids uh numbers chapter 6 verse 24 to 26 all right so uh we are all ready and let's uh, see this one two three the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace thank you lord god father we thank you for this day lord god bless every father of god and i thank you for your word and thank you lord god for every everything that you've done oh lord god being our father in heaven so thank you lord god again we we pray lord god that bless everyone lord in jesus mighty name of god we pray amen and amen <music>